What's up folks, Mikey Swartz here. Just got these spindle gussets in from Total Chaos. Pretty standard, I guess there's lots of companies that make them, but I went with Total Chaos. They were pretty reasonable price. It was like 50 or 60 bucks. Not a bad deal for what you're getting these, but if you wanted to make them, I'm sure you could. These are probably eighth inch plate, maybe a little thicker. Something that really impressed me from Total Chaos, these instructions are really good. It's three pages, and I mean, they're really detailed. Even if you don't have your own welder, you can take these to the shop and have someone else weld them after you tear it apart yourself. I'm gonna do everything the instructions tell me to. I'm planning to totally tear everything apart so I don't get any kind of heat in the wheel bearing or anything like that. I think that's probably pretty important. You wanna get that wheel bearing out of there, get the ball joints off. I mean, you could weld these in the truck, but I don't think it would be a good idea. I think you should really strip down those spindles the, the entire way down to nothing. So let's get started. These directions are so thorough, but they did forget to tell you to remove the wheel first. I'm going to start by removing the wheel. I'll point that out. That should be step one, but their step one is remove the caliper and rotors. That's all right, though. I I'll let them slide. Step zero, pull your wheels off. Basically, I think the best thing to do is to do both sides at the same time because they don't want you to weld these things one at a time. You've got to weld them both at the same time. That way as you're welding the one, the other one can cool down a little bit because something they said in the directions is you don't want to get those things too hot all at once. So I'm going to do both sides at the same time. Doing this step by step as per Total Chaos instructions. Step one, remove your caliper and rotor. Of course you have to pull this little bracket too. That should be a 12 mil. Find yourself something to hang these calipers on. Not putting any stress on the brake line itself. Uh, of course, the rotor, the rotor should come right off. That's going to be the easiest part of this whole project. Step two remove all wheel speed sensors and related wiring from knuckle. Uh, I think that's the only wiring that I have. Of course, a normal truck would have wires running with these. Mine don't because I already removed them because I hate ABS. These things do like to break when you pull them off, so if you want to keep your ABS, I just broke this one, I don't really care, but uh, if you want to keep your ABS, you might be able to leave these on while you're welding them. Uh, if you can't get one off very easy, maybe just leave them on there and you might get away with it. Because uh, if, you, if you try to remove it, you're probably going to break it anyway in this situation. The other side came right out, this side didn't. Step three, remove metal dust cap which will expose the axle nut. I've already done that because I never put my dust caps back on last time I was messing with the truck. Remove cotter pin. I didn't put that back in either because I just have axle stubs in here. Right now I don't have axles. I ordered some and they just came in too. So I'll be putting them in in the next episode. Remove the cotter pin and remove the axle nut. Step five, break loose the four bolts that hold the bearing assembly into the knuckle. Just break them loose, do not remove them. All right, here's an old trick to breaking these loose. Uh, put another wrench on the end of that and get a little smack. And you wanna turn these so your studs aren't lined up with where you're trying to get in there because that won't work. And step six. Remove the cotter pin from the upper ball joint and loosen the upper ball joint nut. That's this one. In my case, I have these uni balls, so that's a little different, but you know, you get the idea. Usually you'll have a cotter key in here. Mine don't have. The directions are to just loosen that, so we got that loose. Step seven, remove the cotter pin and loosen the tie rod nut. That would be this one here. Okay, we're just going to loosen this as per the directions. Usually I would just stick an air gun on that, but since they don't want us to take them off yet. Now they step eight, they want us to actually remove these. Okay. See how that just fell right apart? Yours isn't going to do that if you've never had it apart. You'll have to bang on that with a big hammer to get that to fall off. 
Same with these. If you have regular ball joints so they've never been off, you're gonna have to hit this with a hammer right here. Uh, what I do is leave your nut on there a little bit, loosen it like, like how I have it. Bang on that with the biggest hammer you have. Step nine. Remove the two 19 mil bolts that attach the lower ball joint cradle to the knuckle. That's this one down here. This is a pretty sweet design because you just take these two things off, these two bolts come off, and you don't have to, to uh, knock your ball joint loose on this. Very nice. Step 10. Support the knuckle in one arm as you use a dead blow hammer to knock the axle out of the hub assembly. At this point, the knuckle should be free from the vehicle. Remove it and set it on the bench. Uh, I don't have axles in this truck right now. I already pulled the stubs out, so I'm skipping this step. But of course, if you had to do it, they're telling you just knock your axle back through here a little bit. Uh, this is a, kind of a two-man job if you really have to do all that. Uh, but for me, it's pretty simple because I didn't have axles in there. So there you have it. One knuckle is removed. I'm gonna get that right now. Step 11. I'm not gonna read this, it's too long. Basically, this is where we're gonna pull these wheel bearings the whole way out. We'll have to use your open end of your 17 mil wrench and uh, start backing these out. And you have to do them evenly because you're gonna get to a point where you can't back this out any further uh, because you're gonna run into this. You know, Mine might come out by hand. Mine are gonna be a lot easier to turn out because like I said, this truck's been apart before and I have anesthesized all this stuff. So it's gonna come right out for me. Uh, you'll get to a point where it, you just can't get it out any further until you start to knock that wheel bearing back off of there. The easiest way I've found to get these out, you could try take a big hammer and smack these at an angle like this, or you really should have an air chisel if you're trying to do work like this. So take your air chisel and you can beat that up with your, with your hammer bit, or you can stick a, a, a chisel bit directly in here and chisel the shit out of it to, to break that off of there. Mine, like I said, are anesthes, so mine, are, mine should come off pretty easy. This would have been easier while it was on the truck, so I'm gonna disagree with Total Chaos instructions here. I think this should have been back in the steps uh, before we take the whole spindle off. I think this should have came off first uh, because the truck would hold this together for us while we're beating on this with a hammer and prying on this with a pry bar. So uh, that's my recommendation, do that first. But anyway, after you pry that out a little bit, then you have to back your bolts out some more. And you'll eventually get to a point in fact, we probably can already back these the whole way out. It doesn't take a whole lot. Once you get them the whole way out, you can completely separate these. Okay. When you put these back together, Put anesthes all over this stuff. I've already done it, that's why mine came apart so easy. This truck has, has uh, new wheel bearings in it that I put it in a while ago. So when I did that, I anesthesized all this stuff. So uh, make sure to do that when you put it back together. It makes it much easier to work on your truck in the future. Just to be completely thorough, I just realized I never pulled this bracket off the back of my spindle. Uh, I think that was holding on some uh, ABS wires, which I already had pulled out of my truck. So I figured I'd just show you, I am gonna remove this too. They don't tell you this, but there is a seal in here too for that wheel bearing. I would knock that out of there as well, even though the, the directions don't really specify to do that, but that is rubber in there. And of course, you know, if that rubber gets hot, it's gonna melt. So I'm gonna knock these seals out of here as well. Pretty much have a bare knuckle but i'm gonna point out one extra thing while i'm at it since i broke off this uh wheel speed sensor i'm gonna knock that out right now don't forget to do that if you want to replace them if you did break one off like i did don't forget to knock them out while your uh, spindles are torn apart because you won't be able to get that out very easy once you put a wheel bearing back in there so step 12 
Once the knuckle is bare, you need to hold a gusset up to the knuckle and mark where the paint needs to be removed. I'm gonna grab my brackets now. I believe this is how they go. Yeah. Line these up as best as you can without really beating them into, into place exactly. You wanna take a marker, mark these where they're gonna get welded. Uh, just to give yourself an idea where you have to grind the paint off. It's not gonna be exact science, of course. And you probably wanna take more paint than it seems you would have to take off. Just to make sure none of that gets in your welds. For this, I would recommend a flapper disc rather than a grinding wheel. I think the grinding wheel is probably a little more aggressive than what you would want on this. Best thing to do is to just get through the paint. Don't, don't try to take too much off. Yeah, this spot back here is a little hard to get into with a, with a disc. So I'm gonna put a wire wheel in there to get that spot. And maybe around here too. I'm gonna use a wire wheel on this. That is really doing the job. And with the wire wheel, you don't have to worry about taking off too much material because that really is just going to take the paint off. It's not going to take off much metal. So I really like that. Yeah, that looks good. If you like pretty welds, make sure you put a lot of work into that. If you got any paint in your welds, it's going to look like shit. Step 13 is where we're going to, we're going to stick this into place, bolt this back up onto the truck, unless you have a 9 16th bolt to put in there. I'll assume most of us don't have that laying around the shop. So I'm going to put these back up in here. If I line these up with a hole and, and really stick them together, it seems like I've got a bit of gap there. Um, if I tap it into place, that's still pretty much lined up there. I can get a lot tighter, but I do have a bit of a gap down here. You can see how wide the gap is there. Not too thrilled about that fitment. That's gonna be a lot to fill with the welder. So I think what I'm gonna do is avoid tacking any of this area. I'm gonna weld here and here. I'm gonna tack these two spots as well as some more. And then I'm gonna beat that in with a hammer before I start to weld. This is a situation where having upper unit balls is really going to be nice because we can just hold this now at the bottom doing this backwards. Hold this at the bottom and we can just run this in at the top. So that really forced a lot of gap down here. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to break this back loose and see if I can position it a little better um, before I really start to try to fit this. Like I said, I think we're just gonna weld it here and here, and then we'll beat that down in with a hammer. I'm gonna tighten this back up now. I turned the welder up pretty, pretty hot for this. So I tacked it four spots around the top, here, 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 and then two spots down here. Also part of step 13 is to remove the spindle after you put this tack on. I feel like it's stronger already. So it looks pretty good. This is the spot where I want to bang in with a hammer a little before we try to weld that. I'm gonna go ahead and hang my other spindle up here now and tack it. All right, now that we've got both spindles tacked, we're gonna move on to step 14. The directions are pretty vague here. It does say on here that uh, it's recommended to not overheat the spindle and to weld in moderation. Another recommendation they make is to weld some on one spindle and then weld some on the other spindle so you're going back and forth so you're not gonna overheat just one spindle. I am gonna work my way around these spindles well, back and forth on them instead of just throwing a bunch of heat into just one. And I'm not gonna just start at one end and work my way the whole way around, of course. You know, maybe weld some up here, weld some down here, weld some in the middle, then go to this spindle, do the same, then start filling in gaps in between. You know, before I start, I'm gonna point out one more time that I have a big gap down here at the bottom, so I'm gonna 
weld just down to here and just to here. I'm gonna pound that in with a hammer before I try to weld it. Just ran out of welding wire, just gotta put a new spool on here. Had a little stint there where we ran out of wire and had to run the loads. Good thing about running out of wire was that these had a chance to completely cool off already, so I'm starting over cold again. Since I just welded here and here, that's going to put some heat into this, so I'm going to bang it down just a little bit now. Just to close up that gap a little so I can weld it easier. You can see the difference. That's the one I didn't bang down. That one I banged down a little bit. So that'll make that a lot easier to weld. That's just way too much gap there. I just noticed there's a bit of a gap here too. So before I try to weld that, I'm gonna pound that down till that hits there. Yeah, that'll make that easier to weld. That'll make that much easier to weld. Take away all those gaps. I'm gonna have to turn the welder down when I do this because that's thin to thin metal. So I'll cut the welder back a little. I am gonna point out that yes, I did both sides of this, uh, the whole way up through, all the way up to here. You can't really get back in there with a welder too good. And I think I should point out that this is probably where you don't wanna weld the inside right here because you don't want that to interfere with your with your nut there for your ball joint so i'm not even going to try to weld this seam here underneath uh, i'm sure that's not going to affect it at all so i would not recommend even trying to weld that you probably run into more problems than it's worth because any kind of build up you get there is going to interfere with that nut so don't do that this is going to be plenty strong i'm sure much stronger than the factory one on the note of putting it back together you know Anesthesize these surfaces. Do yourself that favor. Anesthesize all of this stuff when you put that back together. That's important. That, that makes it a lot easier to tear it apart. And if you're doing stuff like this to your truck, I assume you're going to be tearing it apart now, man. My RCV axles just came in today, so when we put this thing back together, it's getting RCV axles, uh, lifetime warranty axles. I'll show them to you on the next episode. I want to point out a couple things. First off, I chose the Total Chaos gussets. I know there's other companies that make them. For example, All Pro makes these, but they're going to cover the outside of this. If you if you want it to be easy to get to this nut for your ball joint, go with the Total Chaos brackets. Of course, if you want to retain your factory sway bar, you'll have to use the other brackets anyway that will cover that. So it doesn't really matter if you're keeping that sway bar. I figured I'm not going to ever put mine back on, so I wasn't worried about it. I just bought these. I point out before you even start this job, Check all your ball joints and stuff before you even pull the wheels off of your truck. Shake it down, check everything because now's the time to fix it. If you, if you have a bad ball joint or something, I found that I do have a bad ball joint down here. It's got a little play in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that now. Check that at the beginning of your project. That way you can get your parts coming while you're working on these things, while you're welding them up and everything. One more thing I'm gonna point out since, I've, since I already finished these. If you get any weld on this surface, any little welding spools or anything, Make sure you grind that off. That can always be too low, but if it's too high, that's gonna throw your alignment way off if your wheel bearing won't bolt down flat. So I got one right there. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, if you can see that little high spot there, little welding spot, I'm gonna make sure to grind that off. Right now, I'm gonna clean these up for paint. Uh, I'm sure that sounds pretty simple, but uh, I figured I'd show you my technique. I already wire brushed this a little bit uh, with the wire wheel. What I got is a, a spray bottle with acetone in it. So I'm gonna spray these and wipe them down. Um, in these spots that are hard to get to, you 
you can pretty much just spray that in there and take your hair. That'll get all the dust and stuff out of there before you paint these. Getting ready to paint these things now. Gonna use this here self etching primer for starters. Since this is bare metal, that's the best thing for it. You wanna put on real light coats, especially when you're just starting. I mean, just mist it on there. If you spray it on real thick first coat, it's gonna come off. You're gonna have a bad time. You wanna spray it on nice and thin. You wanna be able to see through it. Don't try to cover it. Just mist it on there. And just like the welds, I do both of these at the same time. That way, while this one's drying, you're painting that one, you know, and uh, vice versa. On the next episode, I'll be installing these gusseted knuckles along with a set of brand new RCV Ultimate axles. Then we're gonna test them out in some mud. Y'all come back now, you hear?